Good morning. Now for y'all who, y'all who are visiting this morning, I had uh, some pretty good surgery where I couldn't say that for the last couple of weeks. We'd bring the young ones up here and anybody who'd say it and wouldn't say it and tried to say it, <laughs> couldn't say it. Uh, and so we finally, so that, I'm back to normal today. I think we're going to make it. I'm going to actually try to stand during the whole sermon. I've been sitting for a while, but it, it, things are healing up very well. So thank you, Lord, for that. And uh, uh, we want to welcome you to Southside Baptist Church this morning. You are in the right place. Not that we're good. Not that we're great. Not that we know it all. We're just a bunch of lost sinners saved by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. So if you're here today, we're all in the same bucket, gang. Ain't nobody any better than anybody. And I'm the chief sinner of them all right here just because they call me pastor. I can't save you, but we know a Savior that can save you and give you eternal life. His name is Jesus Christ. So we want to welcome you this morning to be here. If you're visiting for the first time or the 101st time, we're excited to have you with us this morning. And you have, just like we always say every Sunday, you have just entered the dysfunctional zone. <laughs> we're a very dysfunctional church. We don't do things like many churches do. I'm just an old Southside boy that loves Jesus, and I tell it like it is. Uh, a couple of announcements that we have. Uh, we're going to have in the back of the church, supposed to be, if it all works out, uh, Guiding Light is the children's, uh, the youth home over here on Rainbow Road, not even two miles from us. They have like 40 children that will not be going out for Christmas. They can't find them places to go for Christmas this year. So they'll be sitting right there. And then we've, we, we brought them over for Thanksgiving and fed them. So we, that's kind of like a, a little ministry, not a little, it's a big ministry that the church does. And I know we've been doing a lot of other things because we're still giving the, uh, the offerings. If you want to help families in our church and make an offering, uh, it's a blessing, a Christmas blessing. And we've got a lot of offerings from that. And just put it in the box there, Christmas blessing. But this one here is we want to help give stuffed stockings to Guiding Lights Children Home. If you want to sign up and assist, they'll explain it all to you. Uh, go to the back table, which I don't see a table yet. I hope it shows up. Uh, if they, ever, they just, you know, I'll be a liar again. Okay. Uh, and so, but they, so they, but the stockings, have, whatever it does, it has to be done by next Sunday. So, so somebody else to help and everything. And I talked to for the, Brother Lujan about that. Uh, the other day, and he says they've got a lot of offerings and stuff already in on that. So if you want to help, that would be a big blessing, if you're able to. You know, we've got a lot of things going. Help where the Lord leads you to help, okay? Next Sunday is our Christmas program, where our children and our youth will be presenting. They've been practicing in that, and we've got angels everywhere and kids and shepherds and stuff. And, if it's, and, and the thing about these things is, you know, the littler they are, if they make a mistake, who cares? We love it. We want them up on stage. We just want to see them in their little costumes. We don't care if they get anything right. As long as baby Jesus didn't drop on his head, we're fine. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so, so we're going to have the Christmas program, and I love it. I said, don't ever worry about being perfect on that, because there's only one perfect one, and that's Jesus. Amen. So anyway, let me see. And now, also on Sunday, Christmas Day, which is the following, so the 25th, that's 25th, isn't it kind of interesting how that fell on that day? Anyway, Christmas Day, we are only having one service, the 11 o'clock service. There will be no nursery, there will be no Sunday school in either Spanish department or our, all of us are coming together, Spanish department and us, all coming together for one 11 a.m. service, and it will be our annual candlelight service. If you've never been to a candlelight service, you need to come. It's amazing. You will love it. Now, this year it's going to be interesting because we're not only going to do it in English, but we're going to do it in Spanish also. And I'm getting with Brother David today after this, and so we're going to hand him the, the different songs that we sing, you know, that we sing one, one verse of, a, of a several songs. We're going to get them after that, or if you want to also, sing that same verse in Spanish. I think it's going to be beautiful as we come together as one church. I love it. I love it. So that's going to be on Christmas Day at 11 a.m. And this morning we're going to be in some most exciting scripture. Amen? Amen. Ain't no such thing as unexciting scripture. But anyway, we're going to be in 2 Timothy, and Timothy again. We're going to be in chapter 3, verse 1 through 5. 
Don't be naive. Don't be naive. But first, we, I've been looking at some different songs and, uh, on, on, on YouTube and stuff like that. And there's one that really stuck out to me. Uh, and by the way, uh, we want to thank you all for allowing Sister Judy and I to go to Branson, Missouri this last week for our little vacation, a three-day vacation. We didn't want to see the, the Christmas play in Branson. We've renamed our trip. It's the vacation that was not. We got stalled in Chicago. Couldn't get a flight out to the next day. So all of our plans were for the next day. So we could never, we never made it there. Had to cancel everything in Branson. Uh, stayed in Chicago overnight and flew back to San Antonio the next day. So we never got, and there's a million stories in there you're going to love. I'll tell them over the years. But you're going to, so anyway. So I, the good thing about, the sister, just add, the good thing about that is when things go wrong, you got lots of stuff to talk about. It's great. And always remember this, and, and, and we read this in the devotion one time, and I say this all the time, Sister Judy says, man's rejection is God's protection. We don't know that if we'd have picked up that rental car 45 minutes to an hour from Branson at that airport, if we drove at night, I didn't know the roads, never been on those roads before, that a deer wasn't going to jump out in front of us, or the plane would have cracked because it had bad weather. So God took care of us. We're not worried about it. And we've dealt with a lot of them, been very, very nice and reimbursed us and stuff. So it's, it's, it, was a, it, was a, it was an experience. <laughs> but the main thing, I was with my chick, man. That's okay. That's all that counted. Okay. And I got stories about that too. All right, anyway. So, but first this morning, there's a, there's a singer called, named Josh Baldwin. The new Christian is amazing. He's got this song. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Now remember that as we're going through these times in this world today, that we're going through times in this world today. If you haven't noticed, there's things that we're going through today. Okay, anyway. This, but when, the, when you have the Spirit of the Lord in your heart, no matter what you're going through, you have freedom. Get the lights, please. Look at this song. It's a beautiful song. Josh Baldwin. You're going to like this one. And I pray this morning that that same spirit of the Lord is right here with us right now. So if you're here today for the first time, the hundred and first time, and there's something in your life that you need to turn over to the Lord, we pray today that you can do that. Because there is freedom in the Lord Jesus Christ. The thought for today is this. Sin is not hurtful because it is forbidden. But it's forbidden because it is hurtful. Amen? Oh, by the way, we here at Southside do preach on sin. Let's stand now as we look at these amazing scriptures. Now, now Paul is kind of heading for his last days here. He's like his old last roundup, okay? And he's going he's to give, kind of give a warning to Timothy of things that he's foreseeing going to happen down the line. Now, look at these scriptures this morning, okay? Chapter 3, verse 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, bolsters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, Heady, high-minded, oh, he's getting, he's carrying a list here, okay. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. And the last one, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. Father God, this is a warning today. We realize we're in the Christmas time, dear Lord, praising God for the for Messiah coming and celebrating the Christmas, but Lord, Sometimes we need to face some facts in church and in this world that we are in trying times. And the church is now becoming under fire many, many different ways today, dear Lord. And we're seeing this very type thing happen. Every one of these things are happening, and we're going to talk about every one of them here this morning. We're seeing it happen all around us. Not only in our country, but in the whole world. 
And so we ask your Holy Spirit to come down and bless and anoint this church this morning, dear Lord. And the main thing is, dear Lord, is if there's one person here that has never trusted Jesus as their Lord and their Savior, that this will be the day that they surrender all to the one true Savior, the only one that can save their souls, the only ones that can forgive their sins, Jesus Christ. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Now, I'm going to read the same group of verses in the message. In the message. It says, don't be naive. There are difficult times ahead. As the end approaches, people are going to be self-absorbed, money-hungry, self-promoting, stuck up, saying like this, profane, contemptuous of parents, crude, coarse, dog-eat-dog, dog, unbending, slanderers, impulsively wild, savage, cynical, treacherous, ruthless, bloating windbags, I like that one, <laughs> addicted to lust, and allergic to God. They'll make a show of religion, but behind the scenes, they're animals. Stay clear of these people. Interesting? So, what we're looking at today in these scriptures is what is called the godless marks of the last days. The godless marks of the last days. Our scripture uh, this morning is, is Paul's inspired picture of the future society. A picture of what the last days of human history will be like. I, now, now, I'm not being a doomsday preacher here today, okay, this morning, but, but note a shocking fact with me today. It sounds very much like our society today right in these scriptures. Amen? Brother Albert, I only want to hear the good, the soft, the wonderful. Well, brothers and sisters, you're going to hear the good, the bad, and the ugly here. We don't try to hide where the problems are at. We don't sugarcoat them because they will ruin your life. Sounds very much like that. Anyway, uh, we did not want to, to think of our day as being so terrible. Let's open your eyes though, right? But we need to face some facts here this morning. I know it's Christmas. And, and, and you may be wishing that I'm preaching about the coming Messiah. Well, we're, we're talking about the Messiah that has already come this morning. And he lives today, and he lives to guide us through this life here on earth right now. So this strong passage in, in, in God's word guides us through the marks of a godless society. It discusses the godless marks of the last days. So I'm not saying that the last days are here. Only God knows that. But as we go through these verses, let your mind open up to how these words compare to our world today. These are marks that come close to, to painting a picture of our day and time right now. It's very possible that the Lord's return may be close. I don't know. I'm never going to, you know, he'll come when he wants to come. You know, I just need to live my life according to his guidance and his love to be ready, to be ready. One thing is for sure. We must do just what Christ said. Be prepared for his return. For he can return at any moment. Now, let's, let's take a look at what God wants us to learn today, okay? Perilous times. We're going to go through every one of these words, all right? Uh, so we should be finished about 5 o'clock. All right, end times. Sorry, just kidding. In the last days, perilous times shall come. Perilous times means difficult, troublesome, trying, uneasy, hard, violent, threatening, and dangerous days. Uh, isn't that on the news every night? Picture people turning to and fro here and there and, and not knowing which way to turn. The last days in the biblical term that points to the end of the present age, the days right before the return of Christ and the end of the world as we know it. Something interesting that marks 
that marks the end of time are, are, are some of the characteristics of all ages. These things we've seen, these things kind of sort of all down through the ages, okay? But they're going to be very intensified in the last days. The first mark of the last days will be a godless world. Are we ever seeing that today? Uh, I was told this morning by someone that there was a Christian group going, had made reservations at a restaurant a good-sized Christian group. They're going to have a meal there. The restaurant called them two hours before they were going to have their big meeting and big meal at the restaurant. It says, you are not welcome because you do not agree with abortion. And hung up on it. Hung up on it. Gang, the perilous times are here. They're here. It's happening now. And the reason they wait two hours before is so you can't get any, any legislation or any saying, say, that's against my, my rights, I have a right to be there. Because, you know, they're using that the other way, too. It, it's just, it's terrible. But see, people are going to learn to be lovers of their own selves more than God. And that, that doesn't mean the, the, the normal love of life. You need to love yourself enough to take care of yourself. I agree with that. It means a, a selfish and self-centered person. To focus upon oneself and one's own pleasure and flesh instead of upon God and on other people. See, during this time of Christmas, you notice we're giving and helping other people so much. This is what we are supposed to do. A godless people, they don't give a flying lizard leap about anybody else. To focus upon oneself and own pleasure and flesh instead of God. Put yourself before others. Put, put yourself, uh, guys, if, if you're married, put, uh, even before your wives, thank you, you're, you can put your thumb down on her, and wives, the same thing on the husbands. Parents putting their thumbs down hard on the kids. Now, I do believe in punishment for kids, because if you don't do something, they're going to be renegades in about two or three years, okay? But see, it's putting one's own will before God's will. To seek your own desires without considering others whatsoever. To go after that one, what you want, more than what God wants you to want. Feel that everyone and everything should revolve around you. So self-love sets, uh, sets up one like, like, a, like a God. He feels that Nothing matters as much as the pleasure of yourself. In the last days, people will love themselves more than they will love anyone else, including God. There's actually religions out there today that think they are gods themselves. People will be also uh, covetous, it says, okay? The word means lovers of monies and possessions more than of God. And, and let me, I'm going to be with you right now. There's nothing wrong with having money. Just don't let it have you. Don't let it be your God, okay? Like stepping on others to get there and louding it over others, okay? People want more and more and bigger and bigger and better and better. And there's nothing wrong with wanting that, but don't put that before God. People will be, now they're going to be boasters and braggarts. Bolsters and bragging and, and, and what they have. Bragging, you know, you tell them you got something, they will always want to up you one and tell you this, that, and the other. I, 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 got, I got some stories on that when I was on the police force, but we don't have time to go in that today. Anyway, uh, always hanging around guys. No matter what I accomplished, they would always have something better, and it would be immediate, and, all, and, and always try, they couldn't stand it. So what we then would do, this is really cool, we would set up little plots and say things that weren't even really true, and it would still... Up me one, but it was really cool. Anyway, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that was pre-Christian. Excuse me. All right, all right. So, <laughs> but, but the world is full of boasters and braggarts. Hey, when Sister Judy and I got canceled on our airline and knew our knew it was gone, we were not going to be able to make because they said, "Oh, we can put you on another flight." This was 7.30 at night on Tuesday. We can put you on a flight tomorrow night at 7.30. Our show was in Branson's at 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Our rental car is tonight. Our whole, anyway, so, so we couldn't do that. But we were, we were in 
nice to the lady. And that, we said, you're only doing your job. You can't invent a plane. You can't do you know, that. Thank you all very much. And I told them the same thing, man's rejection. They said, we'll like that. We're going to use that from now on. They said, we need it because we, we're the, there. They're getting a, and right down from us was this little gal, and she didn't like things, and she was cussing at the top of her lungs, screaming, putting them down. They, their hands are tied. They can't do anything. They're going to help you as much as they possibly can. And by the way, she was escorted out in about 10 seconds. Oh, yeah, they came and got her real fast. You don't want to cause problems in airports, gang. Not nowadays. Okay. Uh, but, but do you know that God resists the proud? We ought to be humble. I don't say, I don't, I don't mean floor mats. But let's be nice. Let's be courteous. That's one of the biggest aspects of a Christian is to be courteous. Because you see, when you're nice and courteous, they, can't, they don't have anything to fire back at you. You get mad, then they get mad, then you start firing at each other, and that's when problems come up. It says people will be blasphemers. Oh, that's a long word. It just means a slander. They'll insult people. They'll rail. They'll rail but like that lady, she was insulting them, using every kind of filthy word you can think of, okay? Blasphemy is usually uh, thought to be against God. You, you, you blaspheme the Holy Ghost. We know that in Scripture. But you know something? You can... It's a sin to blaspheme others also. Think of cursing and insults, throwing, uh, thrown against God and others today. You know, you go out in the world today, and you know that practically everybody is cussing today? Have you, have you noticed that? You push a basket in Walmart, and every and the, hey, chicks, you, you're up on the guys now. I never heard so many women using the F-bomb in my life in public like it was not anything wrong with it. It's Filth, you should not be using any foul language, Christians, in public and in home and even in your own mind. Stop it! And honor God with your voice and your language. Pretty strong, wouldn't it? Just like that, pretty good. Yes. All right, all right. <laughs> I'm starting to get more aggressive now. I'm feeling better. Anyway. But you know that even some professing religionists feel the need to occasionally Cursed to be accepted? Don't do that. Don't do that. Because you know what you're doing? You're slapping God in the face when you use foul language. There's so much of that today. Because there's a, a loss of respect for yourself and others. A disturbed and dissatisfied heart causes people to blaspheme God and blaspheme others including themselves. I've heard people cursing themselves out because they make a mistake. Good grief, come on, man. You're supposed to be your friend. <laughs> Give me a break. All right. Okay, and then it says people will be disobedient to parents. Oh, whoa. Refusing to do what one's parents say. Rebelling against one's parents. Showing disrespect to parents. And you know something? I have seen that right here in the church. It's just some parents don't put up with that. Do not put up with that. If a child will not honor and respect his mother and father, who are they going to respect? If a child will mistreat their parents, those who are closest to them, who else are they going to mistreat? And the problem is today, they get out there and they mistreat teachers who should not be mistreated. And, then the, and the, they, you tell the parents, and then the parents come up there and mistreat you. How dare you for telling me that my child mistreated you? Because they have a right to mistreat you if they want to. Give me a break. They do not have that right. And that's what's tearing our country up today. There is no respect for anything. A child will not obey their parents. Those who love and care for them, who will they obey? Our society is crumbling because the children are not taught to obey and respect others. I pray and I feel for you teachers with all my heart and all. What y'all have to deal with in the classroom is unfathomable. I, one thing, I, I, I went to Catholic school when I was a little boy. Sister Andrews, oh man, uh, because, you know, I was a bad boy. I was, I was a boy, okay? 
and they carried the ruler. And you, did, you had to put your hand out, and you get about three whacks on there, and you were good. You got your attention real quick. You know something? I didn't become an axe murderer because of that. I didn't become a heathen because of that. She straightened me out. And you know something? Then I, then I begged her, please don't tell my mom and dad. <laughs> Whoa, because you know something? In those days, you got it twice as bad when you got home. You better respect that teacher. I don't care if you agree with that teacher or not. You better respect that teacher. Where's it gone? It's gone. It is gone. People will be unthankful. Have you ever seen the like? They think you owe them everything. You open the door. You owe it to me. Give me a break. But on the, on the other hand, uh, I go in a lot of places and I, hold, and I get a lot of thank yous. I do get a lot of thank yous. I, I, I love to hold the door open. Sometimes Judy, she's already finished with her meal. I'm still holding the door open. Anyway. <laughs> I'm a door, I'm a door. You know, if I ever got another job, I'm going to be a door opener. I love it, man. Anyway, I just love it. I love to greet people. I love to put a smile on people's face. I love to be nice to people. We got enough of the grouches out there. Christians, we should be the nice ones. What are we ever going to do to draw people to Jesus Christ if we shove them off with our smart mouths? It ain't ever going to work. So, they have, people have no sense of gratitude or appreciation for what one has, has, for even what you receive. There's no giving thanks to God anymore, hardly. Now, we're in our society of believers, yes, that's a lot. But you get outside of our society, and this is very true. Many persons feel that the world and society or business or government owe them. I'm sorry. Nobody owes you nothing. And you say, well, I get it free all the time. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you. And that, if, you need, if you need it, I, I, there's no problem. I understand that. If you need it. You know something? If you trace that back, do you, find, do you know something that you're going to find out? Somebody somewhere paid for that. There's nothing free. You trace it back. And you know something we say? Well, I'm saved by grace. Because you know why? Because he paid for us on the cross. Our payment was paid on the cross. He gave his life for our sins so that we can be set free. Only through Jesus Christ. There's no other, no other name ever anywhere but Jesus Christ. If the church you, you went to or, or, or church you visit is not preaching that Jesus only saves, there's not even a one little side road. It's only Jesus. You better run from that place because that's an apostasy. Okay. They fail to see how, how good God has been to them. We need to be thankful every day for God. I'm thankful I am not well, able to wake up this morning and, and come to church to preach to you heathens. I mean, brothers and sisters. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, I'm sorry. <laughs> i got to watch my words. Anyway. <laughs> I told you we're dysfunctional here. Okay. And how caring and responsible. We need to be more, more susceptible. If somebody cares, in this, make sure you thank them and be nice to them. Oh, and there's, the next one is people will be unholy. Unholy. Like, not sure the not sure movie says, me and sisters, we're going to be talking about holy things, about churchy things. <laughs> so they're unholy. They're profane, indecent, shameless, given in the most sinful passions today, being blind to modesty. I mean, i, I got to have blinders on when I go into Walmart. I mean, half of them don't even have any clothes on. It's ridiculous. Whoa, man. And airports? Oh, you better, man, Sister Judy's always putting her hands up. Anyway. I mean, wear some clothes. Good grief. <laughs> Purity. You know, it's funny, but guess what? You know what I'm talking about, don't you? You know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm going to make a strong statement right here. <laughs> 
We may be late in that 11 o'clock service this year. All right. We're living in an unholy age. People have lost respect for their bodies. Women, even church members, professing Christians, dress indecently and expose their nakedness. I'm not saying it's here, but I have seen it. Men do the same thing. Men and women tear down the very temple of the Holy Spirit with immorality. This is an age when pe where people have lost respect and reverence for a holy God, the Holy Bible, and holy living. I'm not saying we are to be holier than thou. But my goodness, be decent, okay? Now they're going to be out with, with, with they're going to be without natural affection. Now that's an interesting. That means abnormal affections in love, heartless, without human emotion or love, a, a lack of feeling for others. We're seeing that a lot today. We've been created to be affectionate. We were created to be affectionate and loving to each other, to be nice to each other. In the end time, people will be so set on satisfying their flesh and pleasure that they will forget family, friends, and everything else. They're going to be truce breakers, it says in the scripture. Truce breakers. Breaking of promises and agreements. We read where a, a, in a bank uh, just yesterday, Sister Judy Googled this bank. It said they're thinking about, they're probably, they may be take, taken over by a holding company because so many people had lied to them on applications to get money and they can't get their money back and they're, they're getting in trouble because they didn't investigate it enough. People are lying through their teeth today and putting in false applications, false everything, to get the money and run. Then they'll change your name, they'll change your number, they'll change everything. Truth breakers. Truth breakers. Be truthful when you deal with people. Be truthful. And I found something too. Uh, and I know sometimes we get we have a hard time with, with uh, you know, maybe with a bill or something, you have a hard, but here's the main thing that you need to do. Keep the communication line open. Pay them something. You charged it. You bought it. You're responsible for it. No matter what you think. I don't care how much you blame them for the interest rate. You did it. You signed your name. So pay them something. So I'm making the best. Keep the, they'll work with you. They'll work with you. But when you don't communicate, when you just cut it off, that's when they're going to come after you. Be truthful. People will be false accusers. Slanderers. Ooh, ooh, ooh. The Greek word for, do you know that the Greek word for slander is diabolos? Diabolos, which is the name of Satan? Yes. Wow. Do you know that Satan is the patron saint of all slanderers? And all slanderers, and he's the chief of all of them. The Bible says he is a liar and the father of liars. Slander means the action or crime of making a false spoken statement, damaging to a person's reputation. When's the last time you destroyed somebody's reputation in the hallways here in the church? You know what I'm talking about? You have your little gossip sessions. You're destroying a person. You know, if, if that person that you want to gossip about, if you can't set them in the middle of the circle with you and talk about it, well, then shut up. Amen? Amen. Right. And shut up. Excuse me for being hard there. Don't bring me gossip about somebody. You, if you, you can't go to that person and talk to them about it, don't spread it anywhere else. That's the end of it. Stop the go gossip stops here with me. It ain't going to go any further. Have you talked to that person about it? Well, you talk about shutting them up real quick. Let me tell you about sister so-and-so. Well, let's get her over here and talk about it. Oh, well, i got to go to Sunday school. Anyway. And praise the Lord. Anyway, all right. So, <laughs> I tell the truth, gang, okay? People will be incontinent. Now, that doesn't mean a medical term, but you know, I had a problem with that at first. I said, Judy, what does this mean? He said, shut up, boy, don't mean that. Anyway, I'm having, you know, I've seen, okay. 
I'm, I'm a south side guy. Okay, anyway. <laughs> that means undisciplined and uncontrolled. Which, okay, anyway, all right. Having, kind of in a way, to, okay. Having no self-control, no power of discipline. You just, you just blurt out filthy junk. You just blurt out anger with people. You just, you, you're, not, you're not disciplined at all. A person who cannot control their passion. Now, here we go. For food, Albert. <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah. People can't control their passion for sex, pornography, sensuality, drink, drugs, smoking, whatever it is that's destroying your body. Get a handle on it and stop it. Amen? Turn it over to God. He can, he, Jesus Christ is the only one that can help you with it. I can pray for you, but I can't stop you. Only your will given over to Jesus will ever stop you from doing what you know is not bringing honor to our God. Amen? I'm pretty strong today, huh? Yeah, yeah, feeling better. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm telling you right here. Oh, it should be finished. Right. That's right. All right. Our Jesus Christ can help you break any habit. Only Jesus. I don't care what kind of, of thing you get into that talks about how to do this. You know, go look at a wall for five days and you'll give it up. Give me a break. Read this book. No, the only book you need to read is right there. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus can help you break that. He said people will be fierce, savage, and untamed. Look at the, look at the shootings in the schools nowadays. Savages. Sav and they mutilate the body. It's horrible. And you vow they have us. I don't want to even talk about it. How many times they shot those babies. Mutilated their bodies. And also in that church over there, same thing. They're doing unbelievable things nowadays because they're out of control with God. They have no control. It should never be true of a people, yet tragically is. Never in the history of the world have people become so fierce and savage as they are today. The next one, people will be despisers of those who are good. There it is. That's that exactly that example I told you. That Christian group going in there, we despise you because you don't because you don't agree with us wanting to murder the babies. And that's what abortion is. I'm sorry. I'll talk to you all day long about it. Abortion is murder. That is a live person in the womb. It is murder. And I will call it that. I'll go to prison for that. I will never cease saying that. It is murder. And if you vote for anybody that agrees with that, you're voting to murder a baby yourself. Be careful. You better check out who you're voting for. Look at the laws that are passing on us today. I'm not having any party or anything because they're bad on both sides. The spices of who are good. Notice how, how today we believers are now the hated ones, the scorned ones, because of our biblical stance on matters in this world. And it's not our, it's our, it's our Lord's stance. But when we make a stance, make it a stance with love and not anger. Don't throw it, don't slap them with it. Love them with it. Love them with it. People who actually despise righteousness want nothing to do with anyone who speaks for the right. We're in a world of that today. It even says they're going to be traitors here. Betraying trust and referring uh, ref refers to a person who betrays their country, their team, their friends, their family. But you know, the most tragic betrayal of the world is when you betray Jesus Christ and you betray his church. When you turn your back on Christ and return to the world in its crowd. The last days we'll see this. It says people will be heady. It just means you got a big head. Well, I don't, I don't, I'll check it. it just means, it, no, it means reckless and probably is probably the best description here. Very reckless in your life. A heady person is a person who thinks. They know best and can live as reckless as they want. They're going to be high-minded. 
That means puffed up and conceited. They think so much of themselves that they even feel they don't even need God. They're going to be lovers of pleasure more than, more than lovers of the Lord. When people are more, uh, are more pleasure seekers than, than, than true Christians, then the times are really bad indeed. God is to be loved above all. Above all. And then verse 5, in the last day, it says, people will, will claim to profess godliness. I profane to be a, a believer and stuff like that. But their worship will only be a form only of an outward expression. They'll not possess God at all. They'll not have God in their hearts and in their lives. But they will deny the very power of God in their lives. So in closing, I say this today. Just what is the power of our God? What is the power of our almighty, one and only true God? It's the power to deliver sinners from the bondage of sin, from the bondage of death and hell, all through the Lord Jesus Christ. It is the power of the cross, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the power to save people from perishing and give them eternal life. Hallelujah. Amen? That, my brothers and sisters, is the power of our one true God. Stand strong and love Jesus with all your heart and all your soul. And with that, Romans 3.23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Revelation 3.20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. I'm standing at the door of your heart. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I'll come into them. I'll sup with them and them with me. I'll bring my spirit into them. Romans 10, 9 through 11. That thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved from going to hell. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Live Jesus everywhere. In the last one, Romans 10, 13. For whosoever, whoever in this room today, whoever anywhere, shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. Father God, we come to you this morning.